Hi, it's Dwyer. Dwyercrime.blog, a free site on crimes and uh, police investigations, and also keeping it free. Blogspot.com, a financial blog site that I run that's also free. Today is April the 4th, 2020. Now, like many of you, I have an interest in criminal investigations, right? When I hear about a vicious murder or string of murders, a suspect in custody or perhaps someone who is evading the law. Perhaps it's someone who's unknown. I like to research those crimes. I like to find out what information the cops are relying upon. I like to get the arguments both in favor of conviction, in favor of a single suspect in some cases, as well as the arguments against conviction um, with alternative theories as to how these crimes were committed. Now, it takes a lot for me to watch a crime show, especially when the crime is a famous one that happened decades ago, and to actually be so struck by it that I find myself here online recommending it to others. That's exactly what I'm going to do for a show that's right now on Amazon called Ted Bundy falling for a killer, right? Again, it's Ted Bundy falling for a killer. Now, let me just say, the Bundy string of murders in the 1970s have been researched and talked about ad nauseum. No question about it. But if you have any interest in the Ted Bundy string of murders, this series offers something new, right? It's very important. I'll admit that my partner asked me to watch the series with her. And at first I was thinking to myself, man, it is Saturday morning. I'm not a fan of Ted Bundy's in the slightest. The murders are so graphic and terrible. Uh, I had reached my exhaustion limit on Ted Bundy uh, stories. But she talked me into it. I sat down and I admit I was wrong. This show broke new ground. Now, just a little bit of history. I have long had some disdain for Ted Bundy's girlfriend, Elizabeth Kendall, who's the focal point of the show, right? I believe in cases where you have a killer who's in a relationship and that killer is leaving home for stretches of time in which people are being victimized, right? And the person is a repeat killer. I just have a hard time believing that that person's partner didn't know that they were the person doing the crime, right? I feel the same way about Gary Ridgway's wife, the Green River Killer, right? I, you know, have long held a grudge against such partners because I felt personally that they had to know. And if they had reached out to the police earlier, lives could have been saved, right? especially in cases where they could have reached out anonymously. Now with Ted Bundy, it's really troublesome because of course, Ted Bundy is at Lake Samarish, right? He's abducting people. And understand, as he goes around Lake Samarish, he identifies himself as Ted, right? As Ted, understand the police, after two women go missing at Lake Smarish, the police issue a drawing of him, right? And of course, the drawing has big hair like Ted Bundy, 
points out that the guy calls himself Ted. And Elizabeth Kendall does contact the police afterwards. She has a feeling that something's wrong with the guy she's gone out with for years, Ted Bundy. Right? She feels something's wrong. She calls the police, gets blown off. Well, just understand, when Bundy eventually gets arrested, right? When he's out on bail, she takes him back in. I've never figured that out. Well, I understand it now, right? Elizabeth Kendall is on this show. She talks about her relationship with Ted Bundy. When you're just a YouTuber who researches crimes, you don't quite get the human element. You don't quite understand the relationship dynamic. Well, this show not only has Elizabeth Kendall on camera at length over several episodes, it also has her daughter, Molly Kendall, on camera. Now, when I research crimes, I always want to know exactly how the alleged criminal treated kids, as well as the people around them who might not have a lot of power, right? Someone with a physical or mental condition, older people, homeless people. That'll tell me a lot. This show is revealing Molly Kendall is excellent in discussing her interaction over several years with Ted Bundy. This show also breaks ground. To understand Ted Bundy, just how depraved he is, just how awful he is, I believe people need to look at his first recorded sexual assault. Right now, understand, I use those words carefully because Ted Bundy has admitted to crimes above and beyond what he was convicted of. Right, but the first known assault victim has always been quiet. Hasn't appeared on camera for an interview about what happened to her. She survived the attack. Well, for the first time in decades, Karen Sparks, that victim, appears on camera, discusses what happened to her, right? The crime is so graphic that you understand. All of this stuff about Ted's social persona, him wearing jackets and ties and him claiming innocence for years and stuff like that, it's all phony. Right? This guy's depraved. He's as bad as can be. Well, she's on the show. Let me point out, too, I'm very happy to report that she apparently was able to become a wife, become a mother, live a life that was such where she didn't even tell her kids that she was a victim of Ted Bundy's, right? She doesn't identify herself as a victim. She identifies herself as a survivor. That interview alone, for those researching Ted Bundy, is worth watching this series. Also on the show, this is really a hero in the Ted Bundy story, is Carol DeRoche. She gives an interview. She sits down. She gives an interview. Understand, she was someone who, for a period of time, wouldn't sit down for the camera. She does here. She is the woman who gets tricked into being in Ted Bundy's car, then is able to jump out of the car 
reports Ted Bundy to the police. And that's how Ted Bundy gets arrested, right? She picks Ted out of a police lineup. She's on the show. She talks about what was going through her mind. You get a first-hand account of her interaction with Ted Bundy. What got her into Ted's car? His tone of voice, his mannerisms, what he told her, what he tried to do to her. The circumstances under which she picks him out of a lineup. She's on the show. Also on the show is Ted Bundy's much younger brother, Rich Bundy. You actually see photographs of the two men interfacing. Rich Bundy himself tells you about his relationship with Ted. Right? How he loved his brother and was clueless as to what his brother was doing. Right? It's very important there's an age gap between the two guys of, let's say, at least a decade. Rich Bundy also tells you, and I thought this was important, that in looking at the timeline of Ted Bundy's murders, apparently there is a time where he's with Rich Bundy. And then he returns Rich Bundy to Rich's home shortly before committing a murder. Rich believes Ted must have gotten the urge to kill someone and wanted to protect his younger brother from that spectacle. Right? Let me just say, too, that it's fascinating. By the way, my partner just opened the door. <laughs> She's threatening to make her own video, just food for thought. Um, it's staggering that Ted Bundy's in the Washington area, right? Uh, women, college age, early 20s, start to either go missing or turn up murdered, right? She suspects it might be her boyfriend. Then Ted goes to law school in Utah. Right? You know the story in Utah. Women there, college age, early 20s, suddenly start going missing. Elizabeth Kendall, firsthand, talks about what she was thinking when that happened. By the way, when Ted gets arrested, I thought it was interesting. Right? Elizabeth Kendall then panics somewhat. Because she understood that someone had survived the Ted Bundy attack and was prepared to testify against Ted. That's Carol DeRange. And Elizabeth Kendall had her suspicions, right? Didn't have full proof, but had her suspicions. Let me say this too. Ted Bundy famously gets married at the trial of his last victim, a 12-year-old girl, right? In Florida, as long as you had a notary public there, it was legal for a man and woman in court to declare themselves married. And Ted, of course, chooses the legal proceeding to do so. The woman he marries is Carol Boone. Now, this is noteworthy because, of course, Elizabeth Kendall tells you herself that for years, she wanted to marry Ted Bundy. She tells you herself that when Ted Bundy went away to law school, she was hoping he would ask her to go with him. Well, let me say this. He then asked Carol Boone to marry him. This is after he's already on death row and he's being tried for a homicide other than the homicides that took place, right, on the campus in Florida, where he kills two people and leaves two survivors. 
with gruesome injuries, right? We see the women testify on the show. They're talking about the broken jaws and other injuries they received from Ted Bundy. Well, let me say this. Carol Boone has always mystified me. I thought, who in their right mind would marry Ted Bundy? Well, apparently Carol Boone, they point this out on the show, felt responsible for her 15-year-old brother's death. So she had this kind of savior complex where she wanted to save someone because someone close to her, a family member, had died and she felt she was responsible for that death. Well, shortly before Ted Bundy is put to death, He's talking with Carol Boone, who up until this time, he had told he was innocent, right? Carol Boone at one point apparently worked with Bundy years earlier when he was in the Washington area. Then she herself moved to Utah when Ted Bundy had moved to Utah. So this is someone who wasn't a celebrity stalker. Right? Wasn't someone attracted to a prisoner someplace, as you see on these prison wives shows? Now, this was someone who knew Ted Bundy before he was incarcerated. Well, it's not until days before Ted Bundy's put to death that Ted asks her whether he should tell them where the bodies are buried. That was his way of telling her that he, in fact, was a killer. Apparently, she was livid. Carol Boone's no longer with us. She's only on this show in historical film footage. But understand, Bundy was a guy who lied to the people who were closest to him. Elizabeth Kendall, Molly Kendall, who flatly asked him, whether he did these crimes, and he denies it. And his wife, with whom he had a child, Carol Boone, right? Ted Bundy has a child while on death row. Well, one of the big moments here, well, there are two more that I want to discuss, right? When Ted Bundy gets arrested in Florida, he makes a call to Elizabeth Kendall, she discusses that phone call, right? You hear her talking. It's a tape that must have been given to cops. They show you the transcript. She herself, in the interview, talks about the call. It's clear from what was said in the call that Ted Bundy committed at least some of the murders. Right? He talks about problems he's had that he apparently can't control. Right? As you hear the tape of Kendall discussing what was said, it's clear that Ted Bundy was a murderer. Right? It's, it's clear. And that's when he's communicating it to Elizabeth Kendall, right? This is after he escapes from prison and then travels to Florida, kills two people at a university. I believe it's uh, Florida State University in Tallahassee, right? He kills two people at a university. He gets arrested. He calls his ex-girlfriend. And on the tape, he makes it clear that he has a condition that he cannot control. Let me also say the last episode of this series, if you're a Ted Bundy researcher, is must watch. On it, his former lawyer talks about how she had a conversation with her client, Ted Bundy. 
days before he's put to death, in which Bundy is trying to do whatever he can to buy time. So he tells his lawyer that he has information about other murders he committed that he's willing to share with the state of Florida if he can just get some more time. So she then asks him to give her an example. Now the example is breathtaking, right? Bundy discusses a time where he's driving on the road in his Volkswagen. He sees a woman on the side of the road, right? It's unlikely, by the way, that he was even charged with this crime. He talks about how he knocks her out because apparently if the victim talked back, if he realized that the victim was a person, if the victim unit, uh, humanized themselves, then Ted Bundy would lose the will to kill them. He would lose the thrill of killing. So he knocks this woman out. He takes her into the woods. She apparently comes to, he tells her that he's gonna let her live if she does what he wants. Now understand, this is coming from Ted himself to his lawyer, right? The lawyer is the one telling the story. And of course, Ted tells the lawyer that he had no intention of letting her live. He was just telling her what she needed to hear so he could get what he wanted. So the lawyer, of course, in talking to Ted, realizes that he is completely remorseless. Ted could have been talking about being with a doll. Right? He's completely remorseless. This is days before Ted is put to death. To sum up, for this well-known string of murders, this show on Amazon gets my highest recommendation. Right? I was a skeptic, talked into it by his partner. I sat down, watched it with her. And let's just say I was astonished by it, right? Rather than speculate about what Ted Bundy's four-year girlfriend during many of these murders was thinking, what his girlfriend's daughter was thinking, you can hear it from the girlfriend and the daughter themselves. Let me also point out, too, that there is a, I believe she's a psychiatrist on the show who meets Ted Bundy before these murders become public knowledge. She meets Ted Bundy. She knows Ted Bundy. She interacts with Ted Bundy, right? She was approached to help give Ted Bundy a letter of recommendation so Ted, who was a poor student his first two years in college, could get into law school. Right, so then of course the murders take place. She's asked to help develop the profile of the killer. Right, this is after Lake Smarish, where we now know it's Ted Bundy is walking around calling himself Ted. So she's with a colleague, she hears about this Lake Smarish suspect, right? Doesn't know it's Ted Bundy, but hears that some person at Lake Smarish abducted two women and called himself Ted. And she's with a colleague and they comment on the fact that Ted is a name that's not really that prevalent on the West Coast, right? She's operating out of, I believe it's the University of Washington. And she comments that the only Ted she knows is Ted Bundy, right? Then they continue the conversation. In other words, Bundy was such that a psychiatrist who knew him and who knew that someone in the picture like, you know, who had his hair, the drawing of the suspect from Lake Smarish, who called themselves Ted, had abducted two women. 
And she didn't put one and one together. She didn't even consider Ted Bundy as being capable of these murders. Let me point out, too, that when Bundy's girlfriend calls after the Lake Smarish abductions and is talking with the police, the police know who Ted Bundy is. And they say, you know, we've already looked at him. They've ruled him out. Let me close by saying this show is so thorough that they actually have the off-duty DEA agent who was at Lake Smarish and who was within hearing distance and who heard the conversation between Ted Bundy and one of the women he abducted. Right? We know that Ted, in the conversation, begs this woman to come with him we know that he mentions a catamaran. We know that his hand's in a sling. We know that the woman at first says no. We know that she then grudgingly goes with him. And the reason we know all this is because there's a law enforcement official who is listening in on the conversation as it takes place. Again, the show is Ted Bundy Falling for a Killer. It's on Amazon Prime. I strongly recommend that anyone interested in the Ted Bundy series of crimes give this show a look. Again, understand, his first known sexual assault victim, Karen Sparks, this is her first interview in decades, perhaps ever, about what happened to her. It's worth it for just that reason alone. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If there's a part of the show that strikes you, that you want to discuss in the comment section of this video, I hope you feel free in doing so. Thanks for stopping by.